Hey everybody, what's up y'all? Welcome back to my channel, Tammy Tucks here. We are back for another season of Married at First Sight San Diego. This is season 15, episode one. So if you're brand new to my channel, I do breakdowns on various TV shows, both scripted and reality, interjecting my own thoughts, opinions, and theories into each and every recap. So if you enjoy that type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel, thumbsing up the video, and then hopping into the comment section so we can talk about everything that happened in this episode. If you are new to my recaps for Married at First Sight, I do dedicated videos for each and every couple. So every Wednesday night, um, in this case, Thursday morning, there will be five um, videos posted, one for each couple that has something worthy to talk about, I guess you can say, from that night's episode. Um, that way you don't have to sit through commentary on a couple that you really don't care about. It's, it's one couple every season that no one cares about. So let's go ahead and get into it, y'all. Let's start with Stasia, is it Stasha? Stasha and Nate. Sasha, the 37-year-old boss lady, okay? I thought it was very childish that they put the dollar signs in boss lady for her. But she says she's only addicted to two things in life, coffee and success. She does not know um, her biological father, so she was raised by her mother and her stepfather. She is super driven, super like she's a super go-getter. She works, I believe, in finance while also buying rental properties and renovating them to flip. So she got a little bit of money in the bank, right? She's an entrepreneur. She said that in high school, um, she's a very driven person. So in high school, her mom was going to move. And Stasha had felt that she had been with these people since first grade. These were her friends. This was her school, her community. She didn't want to leave. So she emancipated herself from her mother in high school and then in turn went to live with some friends of hers and their family. Um, and she said she was able to get to see a very different dynamic of a mother and father who are both very much in the household who are both very much involved in their children's lives and having more of a normal um, made-for-TV type of sit um, home situation. So I'm wondering, like, what was her relationship like with her mother after she got emancipated? So I feel like Stasha might got some stuff, you know, swimming up in here because for her to make that statement that she got to see what, like, a successful home life or, like, a more traditional home life was like did her mom <coughs> excuse me did her mom travel a lot did her mom um was her not, mom not home a lot for work or a lot of questions that was a loaded statement that kind of just flew underneath the radar her and her mom seemed to be very close now her mom was very supportive of stasha and her going on this this journey her mom did give you know is it this way I'm not Catholics, y'all. Please don't judge me if I did the cross wrong. Um, of her going on this thing, on this journey, her mom did that cross in regards to making sure the other guy was, or her husband was, like, ready. So her mom asked about a post -nup. And I saw on Twitter that became, like, a huge whatever, a huge to-do. They signed prenups, y'all, on this show. You're, they're not, you know, having these people go into these marriages, especially when you have people that don't have the best jobs or might not even like take it take for instance i know y'all don't like mirla but mirla and gill where mirla clearly had money that she had been saving and working for and she works hard and she makes a certain amount of money and then you have gill who is a firefighter in training at the time so they're not going to have somebody who is just starting off in their career with somebody that's more established monetary wise and put them into this legally binding contract where somebody could come in with the sole purpose of taking somebody else for everything they have. They have prenups. But her mom did ask about a postnup just to protect her own assets. So Stasha thinks that men are intimidated by her. I hate when anybody says that. You're not intimidating any men for any men that think oh my nose is just today. For any men that think that they are intimidating a woman because of their success or whatever, no. 
I think Sasha's going to be a little bitchy. I do. I do. I just feel like, and it's not because of the way she carries herself. It's because of some of the things that she has said. Time will tell. Time, time will tell. Time will tell. Um, so then we meet Nate. Nate is a 34-year-old hustler with a heart. Don't come on here and call yourself no hustler. <laughs> Don't tell me. Because even though a hustler um, can sometimes have a positive connotation, somebody that works hard and all this other stuff, for all intents and purposes, if you being called a hustler, my guy, you're not being looked at in the best light. Okay, so he said that he is an unorthodox risk taker. So he said he used to sell replica Louis bags until the police came and told him he might go to jail for this. So y'all don't y'all got a booster on here? Y'all got a booster? Y'all got the man that's going into the beauty salon with all his fake Louis bags while like holding a Shasta soda in his hand. You know, you like this, Miss Lady, ma'am? Miss Lady, you like this? It just look like the real one, don't it? That's who y'all have on here? He said he's now a day trader, and he sells ad space to retailers and malls. My first reaction was, is this man doing Forex? Y'all know what Forex is, right? Forex are the people that come and get in your Instagram DMs and tell you that they can teach you how to take $10, $10 and flip it to $10,000 by just, you know, <clears throat> trading in the right stocks and they want to have all these classes. I have a younger cousin that be on that Forex shit and they, they host all these big parties, you know, where they're teaching you how to day trade. You're a... Because he didn't say, this is not going to work. I'm saying now, Stasha and Nate are not going to work. They might be physically attracted to each other because both of them are very attractive people. But this is not going to work. Her personality is not going to work with his. She's going to see the fact that this is a reformed scammer that, I mean, it's just doing a, a more higher level, I guess we can call it, a classier scamming. But, you, the, nigga, you're a Forex trader. <laughs> Why can't they just get people that have jobs on here? Why? Um, okay, uh, he did not have any black friends when he was telling his friends about that. And I know y'all don't like, some of y'all don't like when I talk about race, but it is a red flag to me when a black person does not have any black friends. I'm sorry, but that is a red flag to me. That is eyebrow raising. That was kind of, huh. So the fact that he did not have any, I'm not saying he doesn't have any at all, but in this moment when he was telling them that he was going to get married, he didn't have any black friends. And that was, that was concerning to me. I'm sorry. So while they are out <clears throat> dressed and tuck shopping, Nate picked out a hideous tux. It was black and then had like satin, not satin, what was it, like rayon or something, blue, paisley. I didn't like it. I didn't like it at all. Stasha was talking to, um, I think that was like a friend of hers and her mom, about how she's so excited to get married. She's been waiting for this for <clears throat> so long. She didn't think that she would now be 37 and unmarried girl me either <laughs> i didn't think i would be 37 and unmarried but here we are you know what i mean sometimes life has different routes and different you know different paths for everybody to take that don't mean you run to a show girl that don't mean you run to a show but they have a conversation about being submissive and <clears throat> while you know a lot of women hear submissive and we already think that we're not going to just let somebody tell us what to do. You know, there are levels to submissiveness in a relationship. And it's really just allowing the man to to kind of lead in a way that you feel comfortable with. Now, 
Stasha was saying how she's not going to just come in and let this man blindly lead her. And no one is expecting you to. But she was like, I mean, he we can start off slow. He can, you know, decide what we're going to have for dinner. He can do little stuff like that. But he's not right. And it was kind of like, Stasha, girl, this is probably why you're single. And I hate to say that, but something about Stasha, she is going to eat Nate alive. This is not going to work. This is not going to work. So we have the best, um, and then uh, Stasha gets extremely overwhelmed while trying on her dress, and she can't stop crying, and it's all these emotions, and it's a lot going on for her, but she's very excited. So we get to the bachelor, bachelorette party, bachelor party. Nothing really went on. I'm glad that they cut these down to, like, the 10 minutes they saw, because we really don't need to see all of this. I've said before the matchmaking special should be where we're watching them meet their, um, tell their, their families and friends. And when we see them dress shopping, tuck shopping, and then going to their respective bachelor and bachelorette parties, that should all be in the matchmaking special. Episode one should come in with us seeing these people wake up on wedding day. Three hours, we should have got all five marriages last night. But Married at First Sight did better because we have now at least gotten one marriage in the first episode. Red the bachelorette party. Sasha seems like she's having a good fun. She's keeping it cute, very classy based. She's not out acting a fool, doing a lot. Meanwhile, and um, so one of the questions was they asked her, how would you feel about your guy getting a lot of attention? She said she doesn't mind that. Her issue becomes when you become disrespectful with it. There's a way for you to get attention and still be respectful about it in regards to her. And I agree. Meanwhile, over at the bachelor party, Nate is whipping the stripper with the whip. Nate also then tells the stripper, get on your knees right now in front of her, in front of him, while he holds a can of ready whip and it ends her mouth as if to simulate a climax. And that was what we saw about Nate and Stasha. Something about Nate gives scammer vibes. Well, we know he used to be a scammer, but Nate gives scammer vibes to me. Nate seems like he's a pretender. He seems like he's a person that's not really being his true authentic self. I didn't like the fact that he had on a black and yellow shirt with white pants. That stressed me out more than y'all could ever know. Um, like I said, I think Stasha, Stasha is going to be a little bitchy. Um, she just, that's the vibe that she gives off to me. And it's not because she knows what she wants out of life. It's more or less because of some of the things that she said, some of the, um, some of the things that she said and how she phrased some of the things that she was saying. But nonetheless, we'll see how this train wreck goes. If you have not already checked out the other videos from um, last night's episode on my channel with every couple. And I will catch you guys in the next one. Hop in the comment section down below.